In a previous video, I went over the periodic trend or periodicity trend of atomic radius. In this video, I'm going to go over the second most common, which is ionization energy. If you'd like a copy of this Google Doc that I'm taking notes on, go to the description below in this YouTube video and click the link. It'll force you to make a copy and you'll have one for your own. So let's get started. We're going to go through the definition of what ionization energy is. Then we're going to describe the trend. And then we're going to do an explanation of that group and period trend together. I'm going to make a, an advanced version of this video, which will cover first, second, and third ionization energies, as well as the group and valence trend. But in this video, I'm going to keep it simple and just worry about ionization energy and the general trend of ionization energy. All right, so ionization energy is defined as the energy that's required or absorbed, meaning you have to add it in to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. So let's just look at the atom sodium, which would currently have a zero for what's called a charge or a net charge. If you look at the periodic table, it has atomic number 11, and if it's neutral, it would also have 11 electrons. And this I went through in a previous video called atomic number and mass number. The other thing that we learned in, in other videos is that this would have one valence electron. Now these, this one valence electron would be the farthest from the nucleus, and in the end, it's going to take the least amount of energy to remove. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on that one electron being removed. The proton count stays the same. That's why it's still called sodium, capital N, lowercase a. Okay. But now we have 10 electrons. And then if you do a little math problem, 11 pluses, 10 minuses. And that's how chemists come up with this charge that's in the upper right corner. That there, There's not an extra proton. There's one less electron. So that other electron that we, you know, we had to get to 11 is now being removed from this atom and it turns it into something called an ion. So something else you might want to add is that this is how we form ions that I talked about in that atomic number and proton count video and mass number and etc. So these form ions and then we can, I'm just going to put exclamation point, <laughs> and then we can form cations which are ions that have lost electrons. And we can form anions, which would be gaining electrons. Now, for ionization energy, we're only going to be losing electrons. So this is only going to be the formation of cations. So I was going to write anions, but in reality, ionization energy is removing electrons. And so they're only going to form what are called cations. So let me just draw the orbital diagram, which shows where all the electrons exist in the sodium atom. There are two electrons in the first energy level in that s orbital, two more here in the s orbital at the second level. And then you have six total electrons that are still in the second level, but they're making, or they exist in that p orbitals, or p orbitals plural, because there's three of them. And then that last electron, the 11th electron, so if you count these arrows, that's the number of electrons. The last electron exists out in the third energy level, which is definitely the farthest away, which is why it's the valence. Now, in the second orbital diagram, what I'm going to do is just show you that if we were to draw the 10 that were there, and then kind of I'm going to show like the other one has been, has been moved out. It's been taken out, and it's out here, sort of. This is that one electron that was removed, and it's out here ready to be added to another atom, which is where something called electron affinity would come into play. So don't forget that this electron is just given the little symbol of an arrow. Now, again, you can make full-headed arrows or you can make half-headed arrows. It doesn't really matter, okay? I'm just using that what are called half-headed arrows because I feel like they're easier to draw. So what is the trend? So on this periodic table, I'm just going to give you four numbers and just have us kind of just look, okay? So I'm just going to write right on top of the element symbol the um, ionization energy for that atom. So for lithium, it's 520. Now these are in kilojoules per mole. So all of these numbers I'm writing are the number of kilojoules it takes to remove um, that electron from a mole of atoms. Now again, the mole is something that you'll deal with later. For right now, just realize that this is a, an input of energy. Sometimes chemists will even put a plus. It's an input of energy to remove the electron. All right, so let's deal with cesium. It's 376. So kind of look again, is it getting bigger or smaller? And then if we go across to neon, it's 2,086. And down to radon, it's one, or not radon, sorry, that was Agonisian. Radon is 1037. 
So it all it just took a few numbers just to make sure this video stays pretty short. You might have a book that has way more values in there. But the whole point of this is I'm hoping that you see that the ionization energy is actually larger towards the upper portion of the periodic table. And it's also larger from, I'm going to get rid of this, from what's called left to right. So it goes the exact opposite of atomic radius. Think about that. So this is going to be increases. And a lot of people just do IE for ionization energy. And same here, this is increases in ionization energy. So our largest ionization energies are located in the upper right portion of the periodic table and our lowest are in the lower left. Now remember what I said in the previous video about atomic radius. These are large um, atoms in the lower or large atomic radius, okay, in the lower left. And now we can add one more thing. They have low ionization energy. So again, I really focus on a lot of L's in the lower left of the periodic table. So lower left of the periodic table. They're large and they have low ionization energies. So let's just quickly describe the trend in words. And I'm just going to use the word traveling, okay? So when traveling, now it sounds like you're going on a trip, but this is not a trip you probably want to take. So when traveling down a column, I'm going to write kind of the opposite. Down a column um, on the periodic table, I'm just going to do PT for periodic table, the ionization energy decreases. So I'm going to write kind of the opposite of what I have in the, in the chart. Okay, but that's okay. We can do the opposite, decreases. And then we could also say when traveling, and let's do from... Um, right to left, okay, so from when traveling from right to left in a row, the ionization energy again decreases. So I'm kind of writing the sentence backwards. Now if that bothers you, you could just kind of what's called negate the whole sentence. When traveling up a column on the periodic table, the ionization energy increases. So if you'd like to say this way, and maybe you want both sentences, as you travel up the column or the group, it gets larger. And as you travel instead of right to left, you'd say as you travel left to right, then the ionization energy increases. So if you'd like to do that, that's fine. I just wanted my little sentence to kind of match what I have down here in that little bubble right there. All right, so now why does this happen? So again, I'm only gonna go over the group and period trend, but like I said, in a separate video, maybe I'll call it advanced ionization energy, there are first, second, and third ionization energies, and there is a pattern with the number of valence and what happens after you remove the valence. But I'm gonna leave that again for a separate video, and maybe I'll call it ionization energy, the advanced topics, okay? Let's just go over the group and period trend all together, okay? Because we can actually say this one all at once. So atoms that have that have smaller, I'm just gonna kind of fix this. I always write cursive, so some of you might not like cursive. The atoms that have the smaller, so I'm gonna kind of go op opposite again. Smaller atomic radius have, and it's okay to kind of do either direction, have electrons, which are typically, you know, we're focusing mainly on the valence electrons. You can remove other electrons and valence, which are called core. So you can say valence electrons or core electrons, but in chemistry, atoms tend to only, you know, energetically have the, enough energy to remove valence. But we can remove core electrons if, if we'd like to as chemists. So have electrons that are closer to the nucleus. Remember that the nucleus is positive, and if you need to, you might want to write that next. I'm not going to write that, but you might want to write if you think you're going to forget that the nucleus is positive. So they, meaning the electrons, are more highly attracted. So, it's a long sentence, so more energy will be required I can almost even guess what I'm going to say, required to remove to remove an electron from smaller 
I'm just going to do AR, atomic radius atoms. So in the end here, remember from the previous video, if you didn't watch it, you might want to go back. Remember how these were very large size atom. I'll just color it in, okay? And then they got smaller up here. And then as you went this way, they got even smaller, okay? So what we're noticing is that, and don't forget, the metalloids kind of crisscrossing, you know, down. That's kind of messy. <laughs> crisscrossing down through here. Okay, see if I can try to get them all in here. So kind of like that. And there's some disagreement, but that's where your metalloids are listed. And then to the right of those zigzags are your nonmetals. Remember, they were small, and your metals were quite uh, large. So if I'm talking about electrons that have a more highly attractive energy, which means there's so more... You know, if you want to put in here, so more ionization energy will be required. So the energy I'm discussing here, again, put a little carrot, is the ionization energy will be required to move those atoms. So here in the end, you might want to say, so nonmetals will tend to not form cations, whereas metals they will have much lower ionization energies tend to form, ooh, just going to fit it, cations, barely. And that's super important here as you go on to more chemistry that we really need to know, and I'm not sure what color I used. I think it was green in the previous video. We kind of need to know, don't, don't include hydrogen, but we really kind of need to know that this whole swath, I mean, it's a lot, it's even including the lanthanides and actinides here. This whole swath of the periodic table are metals. And the metals tend to be larger. I think I said that again in the previous video. So remember, these have the larger atomic radii. And because of that, they have electrons that are farther, you know, out at their outer energy levels here from the nucleus, which is, again, positive. And so they tend to have a much, much lower ionization energy, which allows them to form what are called cations. So if you forgot what cations were, don't forget, those are the positive ions. So again, you might want to write the cations are what are called positive ions, and they have lost electrons. And I had a friend in college one time that she said, this is how she draws a cat. I am no artist at all. Cute little cat. And then she'd always put a plus for the nose, and that's how she remembered that cations would be positive. The other thing I would say is you got a T right there, kind of make that look at the fact that there's a cat ion, there's a little plus almost in the name for you. But keep, be careful, we don't gain or lose protons. We, again, in this case, this valence electron was lost. We lose electrons, okay? The proton count would stay the same, which is why I'm just gonna bold it. We can still say that this is sodium, okay? All right, so that's ionization energy in just a real short brief, um, not as detailed as maybe some might have to have, but it is a good overview of where, um, where you might have to go. All right, so good luck, chemists. Hopefully this will help you predict your, your ions, and that might mean that you may have to learn about the other kind, which is these, you know, these nonmetals over here. They're going to tend to uh, not lose electrons but gain electrons, which is the other periodicity pattern of electron affinity. Now, you may not have to worry about it, but I thought I would just throw that in, and that would be technically a whole other video I'd have to make about these nonmetals that would have to gain electrons and the energy that would be involved in that. So maybe or maybe not, you may have to move on to electron affinity. If not, you may be able to you know, end your stop right here. All right, good luck, chemists.